song of ascents. This morning we're going to look at Psalm 122. This is a song of ascents. And this is uh, this uh, psalm refers to the love of people towards God and his family and his people as well. And as we read this psalm, however, I'm going to change it in a different way. We have to change the sanctuary of God and or the house of God into the church. And so we can uh, change the content to refer it to the church. And you will realize that you will have a different feeling towards this psalm. I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the church. Our feet are standing in your gates, church. The church is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the small groups go up, the small groups in the church, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to the church. There stands the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of the church. May those who love the church be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my friend and family, of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the church, I will seek your prosperity. And this refers to the love of a people of God towards God and his family and also fellow people. In actuality, that the church is you and the church is me. Around 10 years ago, suddenly there was this very strange phenomenon. There's uh, some people started to say that we are to love Jesus, but we are not to love the church. Because in the church, there are a lot of problems. And the church is quite complicated. So we just need to love Jesus alone and need not love the church. Even on a Sunday, you did not come to church to worship God, but instead you can worship God in your own homes. This is half correct and half wrong. Yes, Yes, the church is complicated. Yes, the church has a lot of problems. You know why? This I am with because, because you are the church. And and I am the church. I am complicated and you are complicated. You are troublesome and me, I, myself, so, I so as we are together, that's why the church has a lot of problems. However, one thing that we forgot that is quite important that Lord Jesus Christ has forsaken his life for the sake of the church. And we say that we have to love Jesus and not the church. But Jesus died for the church. And we are being cheated and deceived by Satan. We have to love the church of God. Imagine. Imagine that the, that the, uh, as the Bible teaches us that the church is the body of Christ. And so one day, you have an examination of your body, and the doctor told you, 
Sorry, that you have a very high blood pressure, that you have high cholesterol, your uric acid is high, and something has gone wrong with your body. So what are you going to do? He said, you have to take medicine. Chairman, so let me ask you, and a person hearing this bad news will kill himself? Yes. Yes. Some people actually does that. But this is wrong. This is wrong. And this wrong thing, this is something that is uh, unusual or abnormal. When we realize that our problem, our body has a problem, and so we need to see the doctor, we need to take medication. And so when we come to know that the church has problems, what should we do? And very often there are some abnormal Christians who are starting to criticize the church. They say something, this thing is bad and that thing is bad. It's the same case as a person killing himself. We are not to criticize the church. We are not to rebuke the church. But rather we have to help the church. So the church will become even more perfect or complete. Psalms 1, 2, 2. Psalms 122, the author causes to know that he loves God, he loves the church of God, he loves the people of God. And so today, in this Psalm 122, we also learn three very important principles. How do we love the family of God? Ready? This will be Jose. Number one. First thing, to love God's family, we must first love God. If we do not love God, then it's not possible for you to love the family of God. Verse 1, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The psalmist says, as somebody told me that let us go to the church, let us uh, go to the house of the Lord, then I rejoice. Why? Because the uh, house of God is beautiful. Yes. The temple or the house of God that Solomon built is indeed glorious and it is very beautiful. When it was our first time to see that, I believe each one of us who says, Wow! 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 And the second time you go there, you say, Hmm! And then the third time that you go, there's no more sound. And the fourth time, and the fifth time, sixth time, and it. And there's no more reaction. Because you've uh, seen that for so many times already. You know, the first time I visited the building of CCF. And when I saw that, go, wow. And I said, wow. Big church. Big church. What a beautiful church. That's the second time I went. Mm. Mm. And at the third time, no more sounds. Now that I go there, nothing, nothing more. Last Thursday, uh, last Friday, Last Friday we had a meeting with the architect. This is the same architect who built or designed a CCF. Pastor, I tell you. Then he said, Pastor, I tell you, and this church building that you are to build will be the second biggest church building. And so as you see this uh, building being constructed, I promised. I promised you. Going, wow. You will say, wow. And then the second time, you'll say, mm. And then the third time, mm. After seeing it for so many times. And when people say, let us go to the house of the Lord, I rejoice. It's not that because it is nicely built. There's another thing that causes some is to say it is beautiful. I studied in Hong Kong. And when I first came to the Philippines, I discovered one thing. Every time there's a basketball competition between the Sal and Ateneo, 
a lot of people seem to be crazy. They are very tense. They are very tense. And to me, whoever wins between Ateneo or Lasal, it doesn't bother me at all. Until one time, when my son went to Ateneo, and from that time onwards, whenever there's a competition between Lasal and Ateneo, do you know who I would side it with? So the next time I will say, okay, go for Ateneo. But then one time, when my daughter went to UST, and now here comes the problem. Because the competition is between Ateneo and UST. So at home, I cannot even utter a word. Because I love my son, and so I love Ateneo. And then I love my daughter, and so I love UST. So now whenever they have basketball competition, I'll rather not say anything. So you know why? I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because the psalmist loves God very much. And so when somebody told him, let us go and worship God, and so I rejoice over that. Psalms 1, 2, 2, it shows us in David. The author of Psalm 122 is David. David is a man after God's own heart. He loves God very much. He desires and longs after God. This is King David. King Saul. And that's the biggest difference between King David and King Saul. There are two kings. All of them spent 40 years as king. But then, when King Saul was the king for 40 years, there was never a time that he mentioned where the Ark of the Covenant of God is. He never thought about the idea of building a temple for the Lord. He always think about himself and also his own kingdom. And after David unified the whole nation, and the first uh, problem or question that he had is where is the Ark of the Covenant of God? Because he wanted to bring back the Ark of the Covenant into the city of Jerusalem. And so when the Ark of the Covenant is in Jerusalem, so one day as he was in his palace, and suddenly this uh, problem pops up, and came uh, called in prophet Nathan. Nathan says, Nathan, I'm living in this palace. And yet my God is staying or living in a tabernacle. It's just like I'm living in a five-star hotel. And my God is staying in a squatter area. This thing shouldn't happen. So I'm going to build a temple for my God. He's the first person ever who thought of building a temple for God. But then God said, no. David, you are not the one to build the temple for me. Because you shed the blood of so many. And the temple is a place of peace. And so God turned him down. But then David prepared everything, all the materials and the money needed to build the temple. Although he was rejected for that idea, but he nevertheless continued to love God. And the way he loved God is very much different from how we love God. Once we were just uh, 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 insulted, or criticized, and you said, I quit. Because you don't love God. And you serve God because you want people to compliment you. And David wasn't like that. When the people tell me to go and uh, to the house of the Lord, I rejoice. Do you love God? If you truly love God, then it's not possible for you not to love the house of God. And so when people say, let us go to the church, and I rejoice, and many believers, on a the Sunday they don't come to worship God, because they love the world deeper than loving God. 
for the sake of doing business, they don't come to church because they want to have fun elsewhere. They don't come on a Sunday. Many people try to find a lot of reasons why they are not present in the church. A year would have 52 weeks. And it's okay not to come on once or twice. I am not a legalistic person. If you truly cannot come, and there's some matters that cause you not to be able to come, there's no problem with that. But then you have to worship God on your own. But but if you're doing this because you want to have fun, because you're traveling elsewhere, and you don't come to worship God, then something is wrong. And you keep on partying on a Saturday. So from up to 1 or 2 or 3 in the morning. And so Sunday you cannot come. Something wrong. And something has gone wrong. Because you love this world deeper than loving God. You did not put God as the first priority in your life. It says after 911, that all the churches in the United States became filled. All the people rushed to the church. And they were praying and praying. They were asking God to protect and preserve them. After one year, but then a year later, people started to get away from church. And this is where our problem is. When we have troubles, we come to God. And when we are trouble-free, we say goodbye to God. May the Lord God help us. And when, I, when my children and I still quite young. So I very often I tell them the most important thing on a Sunday is to worship God. There's nothing more important than this. It's, it's not no, 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 no. because that your father is a pastor. It is not the reason. No. Oh, well, you come to case. worship God not because your father is a pastor. That's not the case that you come on a Sunday because your father is a pastor. You certainly no, have no, to no, come. No. That's not the correct reason. The reason is we come to this place because we love God. In the past, they even tried to tempt or test me. Ah, says, ah, is it okay for me that I we go to Tagaytay? That we go to join somebody to go somewhere? No, no, no. So I keep on saying no, no, no. Nowadays, and two weeks ago, my daughter in the Facebook he sent a message to her relative. I sent a message to her relative. Sorry, Baba, says, sorry, my father will surely not allow me because on a Sunday I cannot be elsewhere. This time she didn't come to ask permission. She turned it down. She turned, it, uh, turned down the request or the invitation. Because so she knows Sunday, first, first priority. what the first priority on a Sunday is. Let me tell you this, all I am not legalistic. But then you yourself know what is the most important thing in your life. If you want to love God and you want to love the church of God, if you do not have the love of God, then forever you will not love the house of God. Principle number one. Principle number two. Second principle would be that you love God's family. For you to do that, you must have a spiritual partner. Let us look at second verse. Our feet are standing in your gate, Jerusalem. Our feet. Our feet. Verse 1 say, Gua. Verse 2 say, Our. In none. verse 1, it says, I. In verse 2, it says, Our. And there's a change. Sometimes as we walk in this uh, spiritual path on our own, and we feel that we are quite lonely, we are very lonely, and so we need to have companion. And so when you are walking alone, you find it uh, very difficult. But then when we walk with the spiritual partner, then it's going to be completely different. Remember what the song Ascent is. That is a Jewish male, 20 years old and up, and have to uh, leave their homes uh, three times a year to go to the city of Jerusalem. 
No, let me repeat that. It's not that they worship God three times a year. Every Sabbath worship God in their own time, in their own synagogue. However, every year, for three times, they have to leave their own homes, they have to leave their own hometown, and then go to the city of Jerusalem to worship God. And so imagine that there's this male, he was about to leave his house, and so he told his wife, Bye. Bye -bye. And tell the children to say goodbye. And so he was all alone. He went to worship God. On the way, then on the way, he met another Jewish male. He says, Where are you heading? He says, I'm going to worship God. So I rejoice over the fact that people are worshiping God. Let's go. So let us go. Our feet are standing in your gate. So our feet are standing in your gate. A one person becomes two, and two becomes four. Four becomes eight, and becomes sixteen, and becomes thirty-two. It keeps up doubling up. And one hundred four and two hundred eight. And people, the number of people are increasing. And this is what is meant here. We are not alone in walking into the spiritual path. It's a big group worshiping God together. And this path is not easy to credit. If you do not have partners, then at times you will give up. What is the shortest way from London to Rome? And this is a question that was raised in the publication in the, uh, England. And there's a prize to the best answer. And so many people wrote answers. You take what kind of plane and the, how, the path or the route that you're going to take. The winner is. And the winner a good friend. A good friend. So it's not a problem of the location. It's a problem of who you partner with. When you walk along with a good friend, and you find it the easy way to walk in, because you converse, and you eat together, you play together, and so you realize in the end, oh, you have reached Rome. And so church, you need to have a spiritual partner so that you encourage each other, you help each other, we love the house of God because we love God. We are to love the family of God because in this place, you have your spiritual partner in this place. I love the content of prayer of Paul for the church of in Ephesus. It was also the statue chapter two, chapter three. That is found in Ephesians chapter three, verses seventeen to eighteen. And so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. One moment, we'll see how, how wide, how long, how high, how deep. Is the love of Christ. In the original version, you have all of this. And Paul find it hard to express that I alone cannot understand. But then as he worshiped God together with the people of God, and nevertheless still cannot understand. But then coming deeper into this, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep I realize how high, how wide, how long, and how deep is the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. And as we come to worship God together, I hear your testimony. You also hear also my sharing. And through me, you come to understand a certain part of Christ. And through your sharing, I also came to understand another part. And so all together, we come to understand even more the greatness of our God. I don't know whether you have this kind of experience. 
最见证分享嘅时阵 ，and every time I hear people sharing their testimony， 我嘅心内都受到感动。In my heart, I have been very much moved。我今日企嚟讲我嘅见证。I also want to rise up and share my testimony。因为别人嘅见证感动到你嘅见证。And because the testimony of other people、uh, moved you to share your own testimony。And so church， 我讲做咩讲你呢只行大？ Let me encourage you once more。唔当只做 Sunday Christian， 主日嚟敬先到。Don't be a Sunday、uh, Christian only。唔单止是神的嚟敬拜上 ，It's not only that on a Sunday alone that you worship God。神的当然真重要 ，Of course Sunday is very important。但是你需要喺平时中间有你家己参加，你家己嘅小组，你嘅团契。But then in your everyday lives you need to be part of a small group and part of a fellowship。团契嚟面 ，And in this fellowship， 大家分享 ，That you share together， 大家读上帝话 ，You study the word of God together， you pray together， 大家享受食面 ，And you together enjoy food。That's fellowship。That's fellowship。But Tansi, listen. Listen. And you are part of a small group. And that the only thing you do is eat and only have fun together. And never mention the word things that are related to God and never read the word of God. Tonight, you have the permission from me. Then today you have the permission from me that you can leave this small group. No longer join this small group. You're just raising your time. Because it is a waste of your time. Because this is not a cell group. It's a social gathering. This is a social gathering only. Because if there is the absence of God's word, if there is no sharing about God, then it's、uh, you are permitted not to join this kind of small group. And let me know about it, and I'll let you join another small group. Because that is not a small group. Because that is not the intention of God. Norman fourteen seventeen. Norman so the sea chun zap chit zap. You know, 上帝国无在何责任，在何公义、和平及圣灵中间的喜乐。For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit. So you say, go like this: eating and drinking. And so, if your small group only involves eating and drinking, then there's no need for you to continue joining. Because if you continue eating and drinking, the only thing that happens is your stomach becomes bigger. It doesn't have any benefit to your spiritual life. And so you have to observe these two very important words: fellowship, social gathering, and social gathering. And so which one do you like? Then I fellowship. If you want to have fellowship, then we are not into social gathering. Because this world is full of fellowship. Because there are already a lot of social gatherings in this world,、fellowship. so what you need is true fellowship. May the Lord God help us. Many people love to come and join a worship service on a Sunday. They love to hear the word of God. That's good. To get it in heart. But not enough. But that's not enough. That's not enough. That's not enough for your spiritual life. You need to be part of a small group. You have an accountability with someone, and together you grow. And so you find that in your spiritual life you grow faster. The Lord God helps. Principle number two. And the second principle. That is to love the God's family. First, you need to find your spiritual partner. Principle number three. And third principle. You better hear Shang Dae Kia. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you must first rise up and be built up together. That you And these three verses、uh, tells us two very important things. That is the unity in God's family and also the authority in God's family. In verse four, the unity of God's home refers to the unity in God's family. You know, 政治派就是耶华之派。十二嘅支派，沙吉基斯嘅所在，按照以色列嘅常例嚟称颂耶华嘅名。That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the twelve tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the standard given to Israel. Imagine 十二支派人。Imagine these twelve tribes of people. As one. 
they are united as one. And they go before God's presence and worship God together. And that's what you call unity. And the beauty of the church is firstly there is unity. Psalms 113 verse 1. This is also another song of ascent. And in the future, I'm going to share this and uh, explain to you this song. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. And when the church is united, it's a time when the church is most beautiful. And so church, when we are in unity. Please do not be destroyed in the one destroying the unity in the church. Because you need to uh, pay a big cost of responsibility over this. In this world, there is no unity. There's always a lot of uh, fights between nations. Now China and, and the Philippines are quarreling. And there's also a quarrel between the president and the vice president of Philippines. And likewise in your home homes. In this world, there are so many problems. Because there is no truth, there is no uh, true bearing with each other. And so when a church is united, Please do not destroy that unity in the church. And this is the word of Paul. And Paul told the church in Ephesus. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient and bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And so if the church is not in unity, then so what is the difference of the church with the world? In verse 5, talks about the authority of the church. Here it stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. And the throne of the house of David is one that God has established. And this kind of authority originated from God. And the church has the authority of God. So let me ask you a question. Listen to this. We don't like our president. Whether the president, let's say, or the vice president. We don't like our senators. They're all bad. We don't like all these policemen. They're all bad policemen. Isn't that? We don't like the BIR because they keep an audit in your books. In the morning, tomorrow morning. Starting tomorrow morning. In the Philippines, okay. there will no longer be a president. There's no okay. vice president. And there's no senator. I will not have policemen. And there's no BIR. There's none of this. So tomorrow morning. So starting tomorrow morning. Whatever you want to do, you are free. You're free to do it. You want to drive? No problem. You have to drive up to 300 or 400 kilometers per hour. That's okay. If there's a red light, you don't want to stop. No problem. No problem. Whatever you want to do, now you are free tomorrow morning. You are free to do that starting tomorrow morning. Is that good or bad? Listen to me. Is that good or bad? Huh? And so now you love the president. So you want to have policemen. Even they're not so good, they're bad policemen. Because you understand that. If we do not have a good president, it's better than not having a president at all. You have bad policemen, it's better than not having any policemen at all. And people like us is filled with sinful nature. If there's no one who will control or govern over us, I'm surely going to say that tomorrow you're starting to be too casual with anything. And so you see people having iPhone 6 and you're free to do anything, so you just grab the iPhones in the store. Because each one of us will be robbers. 
总比无权定好。So it's better to have authority than none at all. 咱青年人真真无爱爸母管呢。The young men, the young people, they don't like their parents to be、um, controlling them. 我跟你讲。But let me tell you this. 无爸母管呢，总比无爸母管呢好。It's better that you have parents who are overseeing you than no parents at all. And also in the house of God, there is authority. May the Lord God help us. No one of the pastors is perfect. There is no pastor or ministers of God who is perfect. But it's better to have a pastor than not to have any at all. It's better to have a church leader not to have any at all. May the Lord God help us. And in the house of God, there is unity. And there is authority. And where does this authority and unity come from? In verse three. Yahweh, ye ye, no sa lang siu kien zo chin zo nian lo jing zui ji zuo xia. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. Why do you use the built? This is English. I want to use the word built in the English word. How is it kien zo? In Chinese, it's built. 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 This is a very important word. And this is not an ordinary word. It is a word used in construction. And so, before a construction happens, there's first a need for a blueprint before anything that is being built. And the word "built" does not appear the first time in the book of Psalms. But instead, the first time it appeared actually is in Genesis chapter two, verses twenty-two. The English translation used a different word, but in the original version, it's actually one and the same word. And so, what word is that? So then, the Lord God made a woman from the rib. So the maid is built. It's the same word. And so God took a rib from the body of Adam. And on that rib, built a woman for Adam. Built and made he built a woman for Adam. So if Hawa is not just coming out, so if this not does not just come out, Hawa is just showing the God. God 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 is just showing And so after God made Eve and brought him before Adam, all the men there is called men. It's all men, whether you're a woman or a man, because it means a human being. But then when Adam saw Eve, wow, man, and he said, wow, man, that's actually a woman. So he called Hawa, he said, wow. And so he was shocked. Whoa, man! He says, "Whoa, man!" Woman. It becomes woman. That's how beautiful it is. Because it was a special creation of God. Do you know that? This city that will get here. A city that is well planned is very different from one that is not planned at all. Look at the city planning. That is what you call city planning. Why this? My niece. In Singapore, the city planning department is the most important. It works in the city planning of the city of in the government of Singapore. Singapore. She's very good at school. She's a New York Stanford graduate. She master degree graduate. She graduated in Stanford University in the United States for master degree. Singapore, 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 Singapore. And so she was invited by the Singapore government to work for her. 
them. So one time I had a chance to talk with her and she gave me this information that this uh, place called Singapore that everything that they do is planned 10 years ago. So up to this point, whatever they want to build, it doesn't happen just overnight. It's something that is planned well ahead. And so you see things that are being constructed in Singapore is very different. That is very orderly. How about Philippines? I haven't said anything. I started to laugh. It says by in our case, by urgency, by immediate need, we do something. There is no plan at all. So you can turn the sky tree. They need a skyway tree. Now they started all digging all of this digging ups. Says there's no choice but for them to continue with this project. So it is quite chaotic. Because there is no city planning. So you understand what I meant. Jehovah God built this city, Jerusalem. And there is a plan. It is being built up. So what does that mean? And after we became believers, and our lives are changed. But then Apostle Peter gave us this name. We are called stone. But he added the word living stone. That this stone is alive. But then we are stones. What does that mean? I am a stone. I am a stone. And whatever I want to do, I just do it. There's no problem with that. Because I am a stone. I am an individual. So you don't mess with me. You don't bother me. What's a living stone? Okay? I am a living stone. Why whatever I want to Why do, it? whatever I want to say, okay? so you don't just you don't pay no attention to it. it is, it's not related don't to you at all. Don't be a busy body, okay? So don't Thank be a busy body. This is stone. Because I am a stone. No wonder. There's no problem with Why that. Why taste any? That this is my style. This is the way I am. Enjoy, Why can't I be like this? Yes, but. But then the intention of God is not for you to be a living stone. But then what God intended is all these living stones are put together to build a spiritual oh, house. And now it's completely different. You have to be together and joined with other living stones. And so two stones become one. Three stones, four pieces, five, six, seven, ten stones put together and become a living house or a spiritual house. And now it's completely different. Because you, this piece of stone and this other piece of stone cannot be glued together because there are a lot of corners to the stone. And so what do you do? You have to chip off. You have to chip off so that they can be glued together. And so if you don't change, then you cannot be glued together with others. And so you need to be built up by God. And in the process of this building up, you will experience pain because in chipping off, he says you should not be speaking like that. No, 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 no. But you should not be envious of others. No, 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 you cannot no. be gossiping. So one of these things have to be taken off again, again. For the sake of. For the sake of, so that you can be joined together with others and that we together may become a spiritual house. Do you know that we people who serve God, whenever we see the changes in the lives of the people in the church, there's nothing more re worth rejoicing than that. Once you were greedy, but now you're very generous. Uh, once you were very discourteous in your words, you love to gossip, but now you speak words in love. Before you get uh, very angry easily, but now you're quite gentle. Because the living stones, the corners have been chipped off. And now you can 
be combined or work together with others. And Jerusalem is built like a city. And in so doing, we become a spiritual house. These three very important principles. You want to love the family of God. And first, you need to love God. You want to love the family of God. Then you need to have a spiritual partner. You want to love the God. The family of God. Then in your life, you need to be built up. You need to serve. And you cannot serve God according to your own way. But your lives are changed. In verses 6 to 9, and this is the prayer of the author for this very beautiful house of God. That is grace upon grace. Let's look at verses 6 to 9. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. And in these four verses, for three times, the author tells us to seek the peace of Jerusalem. And once he says to seek for the security within the city, and once it was mentioned to seek for the prosperity that comes from God. And so this author, want to seek a security and prosperity and blessings for God and His people. Why? The city, we shamini. Because in verse 8, for the sake of my family and friends, and He got, loves the people and the children of God. He loves the uh, friends and brothers and sisters. He wants people in his uh, surrounding to experience the grace and upon grace of God. The Lord Jesus truly told us that this, uh, this earth is not our permanent home. God has prepared for us an even much more beautiful place uh, in heaven. But then this path is not an easy uh, path to take. It's just like there, there's a two road before you. One is a narrow gate, the other one is a broad one. And it's very difficult to tread in this very so narrow path. And many people will not many people will be there. But that on that road street, road road, that's easy. And people love uh, to be in that. However, it leads to different destinations. And one leads to eternal life. But then the broad gate leads you to destruction. So we don't find it easy to walk in it. And thus we need to help partners. We need to encourage each other. We need to help each other. I know it is not easy to love the church because there are a lot of difficulties. There are also a lot of problems. And there are a lot of uh, uh, problems caused by the people in this place. But then, as we support each other, as we help each other, then it is find it, we will find it easier to walk in that path. We got two choices. And Paul, as he wrote to the church in Galatia, he says you have to be careful. Because if you bite and devour each other, you will be destroyed. The and the church also has two options. Option only. number one. The first option is Apostle Paul Galangong. As the Apostle, Apostle John Galangong. John told us. Love one another. Uh, we have to love one another. Apostle Paul Galangzaya. Apostle Paul calls us to know you know, love one another. that if we do not love one another, you know, we will be biting and devouring each other. This is your choice. So this is one This is your this is your church. And in this place, we are to love one another. Or whether we are going to criticize each other or attack each other. This is your choice. This is your choice. When we love God, certainly we will love the family of God. When we love God's family, then we will certainly love the people in God's family. You know why? 
Because when a person is committed to God, then surely he will be committed to the church. And when a person is committed to the church, then surely he will be committed to the brethren. Because this is his place. And he knows this is my family. And anything that happens to any member of the family and is also my problem. Because I am part of the body of Christ. So any part of the body that has gone wrong, it's also my problem. This is your choice. So you have to make a choice whether you are going to love your church or that you are going to criticize your church. Remember, it is better to have a church and not, than not to have a church at all. Better to have a leader than not have a leader at all. And so you pray for them. Instead of attacking and criticizing them at the back, because to you and even to the church, there is no benefit at all. And people tell me, let us go to the house of the Lord and I rejoice. And I hope this is your prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much because you put us in a church setting. You put us together so that we can learn from each other, we can love each other, we can build up each other, and we can mold each other. At times, we find it painful. At times, it's difficult. We find ourselves also wanting to give up. But because you never gave up on us, because you never stopped loving us, because you always forgive us, you always bear with us, Lord, help us to have that kind of ability uh, and grace, Lord, to love, to forgive, to bear with each other. Father, we pray that we are not here just to enjoy other people, but then we are here to contribute as well and to have accountability. Not just for this to be a very nice place to be in, but for this church, for our church to be a beautiful testimony, a witness for you to this dying and dark world. Father, we pray that we don't forget uh, other people outside of this church, that we are not contented with just being confined the four walls of the church, but then for us to always have this mission in our heart, Lord, to reach the lost for you, because you love them in as much as you love us. Father, we pray that you talk to each one of us, you melt our hearts if it has been heard hardened already. Father, help us likewise not to be disheartened when we are already discouraged. Father, instead give us the your spirit, Lord, to push us further, Lord, not for ourselves, not for our own sake, but for your sake and for the kingdom of God. Father, indeed, as we come together every time, Lord, may indeed our hearts say we rejoice because we are together and we are free to worship you. Free our spirit from any uh, selfishness and elderly self-centeredness, but help us to really be free likewise to love you and worship you and serve you faithfully and wholeheartedly. Lord, as we bring ourselves into your presence, Lord, may you bless each one of us, Lord, that our hearts will always be pure and loving and worshipful towards you. Amen. This is our prayer in Christ's most precious name. Amen. 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 Okay, we listen